Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 236, and you can email the show at pedalshift at pedalshift.net or text me at 202-930-1109 and check Pedal Shift out on all the socials as well. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 236th edition of the Pedal Shift Project. My name is Tim Mooney. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, today, this episode here, where you are right now, wherever you are, is the final installment of the Route Scouting uh, series. And this is episode four, A New Route. <laughs> so you want to check out Pedal Shift, Pedal Shift number 230 easy for me to say, for episode one, uh, which of course has now been retcon to the Phantom Bike Route, and episode two, Attack of Bike Route S is Pedal Shift number 234, and last episode, Pedal Shift 235, for episode three, Revenge of South Central PA. Thank you for indulging my Star Wars stuff. This episode tracks the route, which would likely be day four, from Morgantown, Pennsylvania to, well, let's let the episode tell the tale. Warwick County now, uh, still on Highway 23 here, a beautifully huge, wide, wide shoulder and very nicely paved. This looks like a really great stretch of road. A uh, town, I think, called St. Peter's. There was um, an inn or a bed and breakfast there that looked possible. Also, a vinyl and comics shop, which sounds amazing. So that would have been right around at exactly the 60 mile mark. So I'm gonna look into both of the options there. Uh, just to see what the what yeah see what it, what it looks like uh, for for lodging. It's nice that there's at least two in there, kind of a short version and then a, a right right on on, on track option. Uh, inns and B and Bs tend not to be my thing. I'm weird, I know, but yeah. So um, I, I I do think that the uh, uh, the op- the options being there are good because this is a much less um, uh, I want to say congested, but, but, um, dense area. Um, but I will say my vowels are starting to round. I'm seeing lots of signs for hoagie, hoagies, and, uh, I've seen a few flags for the Eagles. You Philadelphia people are going to just own me on, on my terrible accent there. But, uh, we are starting to see some Philadelphia, um, um, influences here the closer that we get because we are about 60 miles uh, away we will now this route goes to the north of course of philadelphia we are well outside of what they call i'm not sure if this is one of the collar counties as they refer to them um but uh and like many of the things and i don't bring politics into this but it's been one gigantic line of trump flags <laughs> here on bicycle route s so i do i do imagine that that will start to uh, peter out the closer we get to philadelphia but uh it, it, interesting observation that i make and i just leave it at there okay uh off we go still we've got quite a ways on uh uh, 23 here before we start getting into some more of the well collar counties of philadelphia off we go i spoke too soon here we are making a turn uh i I, again i'm going to be following bicycle route s rather than uh following what google maps is saying and so i'm going to be making a right here on to pennsylvania 100 which is pottstown pike so we're going to be making this right and seeing what google maps has to say about that i'm sure it's going to freak out but that's okay because we're following route s because it's been good to us so far uh, shoulder head it, north on Pennsylvania 100 north toward pencil head south on Pennsylvania 100 south toward Hartman Road well as continue on Pennsylvania 100 south for half a mile well as you might expect uh, it is not liking it so we'll see how it goes so yeah we're on a very very country road right now um, still uh, wouldn't call it farms well it's not gonna say that we have a farm and road quality eh, potholy and whatnot somebody still has a merry christmas and happy new year sign up more power to you i do not blame you for celebrating the holidays as you see fit and for as long as you'd like so this part of the road looks uh to be going for quite a ways interesting the deviation off of highway 23 i'm sure that 
that part of Highway 23 suddenly loses its shoulder, which is why I'm I'm tending to just go with what Pennsylvania bike routes, uh, right, what the Pennsylvania bike route is giving me, um, rather than um, uh, uh, sticking with a road that that it, it puts me on just for the sake of staying on it, and uh, Google Maps uh, saying, hey, continue on this. Uh, just because I have a funny feeling infrastructure changes based on how this is signed and, and that's that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so um, rolling topography here uh, tends to be mostly downhill, which is great. We will take that. And uh, again, uh, so far so good. Here on day four, the day where we go into the Philadelphia area and we get to the point where we cross over into the Garden State of New Jersey. Boy, just like that, I have to say, the world just changed. Uh, and, and I don't know how to describe it other than the fact that the town just suddenly feels like suburban Philadelphia. Um, Kimberton is the name of this town. And it's still quaint and country, but boy, it, it sure as heck feels uh, Philly. I've got the world's worst direction guy. Folks putting in a new... Uh, what do you call it, a uh, mailbox there. And one guy was waving both of us at the same time <laughs> and with the single lane. That was that was not good. Um, 25 mile per hour speed limit in here. So that's good. I, it's very ritzy I, I, is probably my best way of putting this. Now, let's see, right on Kimberton Road. No, I think it wants me to go left. I think, yeah, Pennsylvania 113 here. No shoulder in that area, but very, very, very swank it felt, felt like. And I haven't seen that at all this entire trip. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is, all of a sudden you're starting to see Philly influence, perhaps. But certainly it's, it's a wealthier community. And this is also where the bicycle route, I think, gets much more complicated. Um, and, and also, this is a big question mark, this part of the state, uh, whether or not this will work. There is no infrastructure here. Um, I do not see Route S signage, and I, it's possible I could have lost it at this point, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, okay, I've got, I've got a, well, I had a brief sidewalk. Okay, we, oh, no, we've got, we've got a shoulder, some kind of a shoulder to speak of. So I do believe that this is correct. Yep, yep, we, it does look like this is definitely shouldered. I am scanning for indications that this is Bicycle Route S. We are now in the town of Phoenixville, which uh, again, I, I don't know how, how else to put it. It's, it's like the, the difference between being in, 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 the, in the country to being in kind of the exurbs uh, or, or even the suburbs because uh, Philly's, Philly's reach is, is quite uh, quite vast. Uh, but yeah, we are shouldered again. So yeah, it does seem like here, and this is a Pennsylvania 113 at this point, which I will not be on for very long. Definitely feels like we are in the right place uh, route-wise. Is it, is, it, is it a little more... Well... I mean, this is as much infrastructure as I have in other spots. And there's a Wawa. There's my first Wawa. We are, we are definitely back. We are in the, the mid-Atlantic. We are, we are in the Philadelphia area. I'm going to be making a right here on, on our old friend, Pennsylvania Route 23, it appears. Although I still am not seeing any signage. So I, I'm, I'm not sure if I've lost Route S or not. Um going to judge it based on on some signs here in a moment. Bear with me here. Thank you for sticking with me on these. We do have sidewalks. Day three was, I believe, or it was day, I can't remember, day two or day three is featured with, if you don't have a shoulder, you have a sidewalk. Here in Phoenixville, we've got sidewalk. No root S signs. I would really love to see that. I'm going to be making a left on a 113 in a moment here. I'm just going to follow Google Maps if I don't have 
um, any signage here. I would prefer to get that. Yeah, it is possible I may have lost lost the route. So what I might do is uh, take this left here in lovely Phoenixville, maybe find a spot to park in and pull up the state of Pennsylvania's map and see where uh, I am relative to route S. It's possible I may be on it. It's just um, this is not as good signed as other parts of the state uh, are. Uh, I've been very impressed with the signage so far. So I will uh, catch you up when I know I am back on the route in lovely Phoenixville, Pennsylvania here on day four. So the answer is yes, I did lose my way. Um, and it, it seemed kind of obvious at the time. So what I'm seeing right now is not the uh, the bike route, but I am quickly, I'm within two miles of rejoining it. Um, it's a good lesson in uh, making sure that uh, you know what the route is, especially when there's like turn, 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 which is very much a part of this. Uh, in a couple of miles, I'll regain it on a road called Pauling, Pauling or Pauling's Road, uh, but I won't be going through Phoenixville proper. Uh, I, I, I scoot south of it according to the Bicycle Route S map from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, I will have to say, I'm actually pretty impressed that I've been able to stick with it without uh, missing a turn up all the way through this point um, with a vehicle. Again, uh, it will be interesting to see how things go further on down here because I do think that there are going to be opportunities very close to here from Valley Forge National Historic Park. Uh, there is a bike route that actually allows you to take a path all the way into the city of Philadelphia. That's an option for me. I am going to try to follow Bicycle Route S, however, all the way to the river, though, um, and perhaps even cross into New Jersey because that would be the end of day four. Um, alternate route is to go into Philly and then route up uh, utilizing roads and trails. So what am I going to do? Well, we'll see. I think part of part of my decision making is going to be based on do I want to go into Philly, which is always great. Love Philly. Or two, is this route really, really awesome? And do I want the most direct route to the bridge crossing at Washington Crossing, Pennsylvania into the Garden State of New Jersey? More to come. Ah, I have found it. Crossing the School Kill right River. River Trail, then turn left onto River Trail. Okay, now it wants me to go on a trail, which I obviously cannot do. So I'm going to have to figure this out from here. This is uh, Valley Forge National Historical Park. I always thought it was historic, but I guess it's a historical. Uh, oh, I see more signage here for Route S. So this is this is my fork in the road uh, for Philadelphia. Uh, but I'm going to keep following uh, Route S, and we're going to see where it takes me. So the lesson here, I'm thinking, is options. And, you know, as I look at the map and I compare what Google Bike Directions is giving me as an option versus what Bicycle Route S is, it does appear that deviating from Route S at this point is definitely something to consider, mainly because it takes me off of the road in spots and gives me better options. Um, I'm about to be entering in an area called Audubon. I don't know if that's a town or not looks like it is um, and that may get me to rejoin route s and you may hear google uh, chime in here no beautiful little farmy kind of thing and john james audubon center at mill grove oh i've heard of him <laughs> i guess the town is named after him so yeah, it does appear that hugging the Schuylkill River is uh, some amazing series of paths. Like I mentioned, they could take me all the way down into Philadelphia, um, which is very, very compelling to me. So that might be one thing. The problem is, is that Philadelphia puts me way further south. Right now, um, I, relative to New York City, I'm actually much further north than the city of Philadelphia. So depends on what my ultimate goal is. If my ultimate goal is to go to, and I think I'm going to be turning right in a, oh, in about 0.4 miles, never mind. Uh, if my ultimate goal is New York City, I, I think that what I've got to do is do some kind of combination of roads and trails that deviates from Route S, but ultimately rehook up with it because that gets me to New York all the, all the more efficiently. And then I skip Philadelphia. If my end game is Philadelphia and just do a four day uh, trip, well, then that'll work out too. Okay. Here is Route S. 
and this is going to be here on Egypt Road, it looks like, so we'll make that right. And we are back on to Route S. So this, again, would be the if I'm going to New York. This is, of course, the village of Audubon. And thank you for your patience with my uh, routing situation here. I will have to do a better job uh, when I am actually riding it. Hello again, just outside of Audubon. It is interesting. This is this is the true fork in the road spot here. Uh, if 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 you want to go to Philly, this is where you decide because Philly is more south. At this point, bicycle route S largely avoids the all the rem, the remainder of the Philadelphia suburbs and pushes up northeast and makes a hard uh, tack towards Washington Crossing well north of Philadelphia and a much more efficient way again to get to New York City. This part of the route, very wide shouldered. We're out of kind of this almost claustrophobic kind of smaller town, the, the kind of ritzy outer Philly suburbs. By the way, I had mentioned that we were getting Philadelphia influences. We are we are definitely in the outer suburbs right now. It just, it, all the vibes are there. Um, this area is starting to remind me, at least this part of the route, of the difficult areas, the suburban assault, as I called it, uh, in the suburbs of St. Louis when I was riding around trying to get to the uh, train station. The name of the town escapes me at the moment. Um, so, it, you know, it, that's interesting, although I do also know that this is an official Pennsylvania bicycle route, so I expect there to be some kind of infrastructure or, worst case, a, a uh, sidewalk. Right now, I'm seeing none of that. We are in what I will call Chambersburg territory, which is, you know, busy highway next to a giant supermarket, <laughs> a giant brand supermarket, uh, the, 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 uh, the name brand giant. Um, but do in I have... Mile, turn left onto South Trooper Road. Okay, we'll see if Google Maps is consistent with Route S, and it is Route S signage here. Uh, infrastructure is not great here. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but we're going to be going on Pennsylvania 363. Turn left onto South Trooper Road. And as I mentioned, we start to make a hard tack to the north. Here we go. Tricky area here. On South Trooper Road for three miles. Tricky area there. Uh, busy. Not a lot of infrastructure. Uh, but yay! I have bicycle route as signage and shoulder has returned. So, so there's a brief section of of. Um, the ride there with no shoulder probably can manage that. We'll, we'll, would uh, keep my ears perked up. That's that's all good to know. But here we go. Yeah, we're we're back in another shouldered area. It, it seems it's interesting when there's transitions. The the infrastructure tends to go away a little bit, and then it'll come back when you make the turn. I've got a share the road sign and a shoulder here. So Pennsylvania route S giveth and take it away. So we are now going to be making our jog more to the north and then to the east again, and uh, uh, basically working our way over the course of the next 40 miles or so to Washington Crossing, Pennsylvania, which is the end of the line for day four. So we are, again, uh, um, Google Maps deviates from Route S, and I've been following Route S. And let me tell you, this part, woo! The, uh, the steepness and severity and frequency of the hills with no shoulder, it's a thing. Um, not, not awesome. Um, and it's pretty trafficked with vehicles right now. So not my favorite. Not my favorite at all. We'll be making a left here at the sign. You may be hearing that in a moment. Or maybe not. So, yeah, that was not a, a great spot. But, again, we're in back, back roads. Uh, how do I describe the homes here? Uh, large, suburban-y, mixed with country. Uh, yeah, this, this feels like I work in Center City, Philadelphia, but I've got a, a big house in the, quote, country kind of a vibe. Um, 
kind of farms, kind of, but are they real farms? <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. But in any event, uh, beautiful area, very tricky riding, uh, very tricky riding in here. But again, part of a bicycle route, not that that matters in some parts of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I'm looking at you, Pittsburgh. I'm looking at you. I tell you, I would have sworn that I lost the route, but um, the shoulder was still pretty good. So I thought, oh, maybe it's still right. And it is uh, about to make a uh, left on the school road. And I do see the uh, route S signage. So yes, I have managed to stick with it. Lots of like go a mile or two turned. It's, it's a lot of lefts and rights and, and continuing to go uh, uh, north and to the east. So here we go about to turn on to school, school road. Interestingly, there was a Wentz road. And if you're an Eagles fan, you know that that's kind of funny. If you're not an Eagles fan, never mind. Just assume it was funny. Hi, school road. There we go. And root us. And yeah, and a lot, a lot of dinking and dunking and turning. We're, we're, boy, you know, this is suburban Philadelphia at this point, And it is, uh, uh, not the easiest riding. It, it, it's, it's interesting. It's like to do this ride, I, I'm, I'm discovering here on day four that, uh, it's not, this is more of a point A to point B kind of a ride, which kind of was always my struggle with the East coast and riding on the East coast, you know, unless you're on trails, uh, so I think that this is really interesting. The, uh, whereas before I was like, oh, I definitely want to go to New York City. It may be that giving what the routes give me may actually be a little bit more of a fun ride, even if I don't necessarily do the go to this city or go to this place. Uh, because the bicycle routes are, they're, they're fine. They're there. They're infrastructure at times. Usually not. They're just signs, not even like what I've got right now. Um, but you know, it's like, wouldn't, would I be better served taking those trails back a few miles back and having all trails into Philadelphia and then maybe routing and seeing what is uh, available, uh, from there, who knows making another right here. Oh, interesting. Google maps wants me to turn right, but I saw no signage for it. I hope this is compelling podcasting because I have no idea. This may be deviating from Route S at this point. And I guess that gets to my point here. It's like, we're at a point right now where like uh, the bicycle route is sort of, is it a real thing? Does it really matter? And and as I'm looking around here, lots of people in SUVs and how much are they gonna be looking out for bikes? I don't know. I, I don't know, good question. All right, fast forward from the Pennsylvania Turnpike, heading westbound. Um, why, why pray tell is this happening? One of the reasons why I think scouting a ride can be really, really important. And I've never scouted a ride quite like this. I've never gone out and driven so much of a ride. And part of it is because The East Coast has always been, as I've talked about before, a tough, tough nut to crack. And, you know, I know that there are people that have ridden to New York City, and I know that there's a route to do it. But the closer, that that, that last day, that fourth day, going north of Philadelphia, utilizing the suburban assault uh, route that is Pennsylvania Route S, Honestly, it got to the point where as I was chasing it, and you were too with me, it just didn't seem like that much fun. Um, it, it was through a tough roads in tough neighborhoods. And, and, and I, I, I say that from a riding perspective. They were actually fabulously wealthy neighborhoods, but I just didn't like the bicycling um, through it. I, I didn't think that it was... Um, well, fun. Um, the terrain was kind of, uh, the roads had no shoulders and I just wasn't loving it from a safety perspective. Um, so what does that mean for day four? Well, I think 
as I had mentioned before, the fork in the road, the proverbial fork in the road that was there and that was available, which is basically taking the trails down the Schuylkill River to Philadelphia, I think that's the more interesting route. Um, I tend to be more of a city guy than a suburban guy. Ironically, I grew up in a suburb, but you know, whatever. Um, That, I think, means that from a cycling perspective, I'm drawn more towards Philadelphia. So, does that mean that the New York portion of the ride is out? I don't think so. I think that what it says is one of two things. I think that I would prefer to ride down to Philadelphia and then maybe see if there is a better river crossing down there. This probably adds a day or two potentially to a trip hypothetically to New York City. Or, or I just say, you know what, this ride is better to Philadelphia and I call it from there. That's more planning and more for down the road for me to determine. Um, The other option is maybe there is a better, there's a time to deviate from Bicycle Route S in a different way, in a way that maybe is prior to that sort of proverbial fork in the road that would go to, uh, uh, to Philadelphia. So lots, lots to discover, but I will say I'm, I'm so glad I did this, this trip. Number one, It's yet another opportunity to chat with you and bring you along on my kind of creative uh, (laughs) insanity (laughs) that is my bicycle tour planning. But also, I think that what it does is that it really opens up my eyes to the Pennsylvania bike routes. I think that clearly getting to Bicycle Route J uh, in York is kind of interesting. And I think actually there was another deviation that I could have done from Gettysburg as well. I could have stayed on the J2 and kept going up to uh, Route J. So that's another possibility. So what is this trip done? What, is, what has this scouting trip provided me? Well, it's provided me with options. It not, I don't like looking at it as saying, okay, I stopped and I turned around because the, the primary goal ended up being not so hot. I think what it's done is it's giving me multiple bike tours and multiple options for down the road. And I think that that's why this was a really worthwhile thing to do. Um, The other thing, of course, that we did from, uh, I believe that would have been on day two, we discovered the the bridge outage. And that was much better from my perspective to discover here and now rather than having biked a whole chunk of it. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about how this all turned out. And um, this ends up being, you know, a full day adventure with the dogs who slept the whole time, <laughs> which is fine. And, uh, you know, got to, got to get away too. I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't get out of the house terribly often. And when I do, I only go a few miles. So this was kind of fun to be able to do a little bit of a ride that got me away and gave me something to look forward to from a bicycling perspective, which quite frankly, I definitely need it. Well, we'll just kind of put the cap on the adventure there. I may have some more things to say, you know, in the studio space. So talk to you in a moment. So bottom line, I think if I decide to tackle this as an early 2021 ride, it would morph into rather than cabin to New York City, it would be cabin to Philadelphia. And then I would go from there. I want to get to New York City at some point, and I certainly want to bike there too. Everything I talked about in prior episodes is still holding serve. But for the here and now, I think that the ride that I am looking at that makes the most sense is connecting to Philly first and then potentially uh, coming up with a route from Philadelphia itself to New York City down the line. I think that's in the cards. Um, So that's really exciting. And as I said, in the car on the way back. I think that the whole route scouting was really successful. I learned a lot. And in the end, I ended up maybe changing my mind on things or at least uh, having my decisions uh, confirmed when I hit that proverbial fork in the road or should I always say fork in the route. Programming note. Next week, we get into actual <laughs> Honest to goodness, bicycle touring. The first tour of 2021 is a ride I just literally wrapped up this past weekend uh, that included something new to me, and that is the Paw Paw Tunnel Bypass Trail. And if you are a fan 
of Curveballs and Mechanicals, you'll definitely want to check out part one next week. And as always, we like to close out the show with a special shout out to the Pedal Shift Society. Because of support from listeners like you, Pedal Shift is a weekly bicycle touring podcast with a global community, expanding into live shows and covering new tours. If you like what you hear, you can support the show for five bucks, two bucks, or even a buck a month. And there's one shot and annual options. If you're not into the small monthly thing, check it all out at pedalshift.net slash society. On to the society. Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lean, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Keith Nagel, Brock Didis, Thomas Skato, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Harry Telgadis, Chris Barron, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Mr. T, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Cody Florchinger, Tom Beninati, Greg Braithwaite, Sandy Pizio, Jeff Muster, Seth Pollock, Joseph Quinn, Byron Patterson, Joachim Robert, Ray Jackson, Jeff Fry, Kenny Mikey, Lisa Hart, John Denkler, Steve Henkel, Miguel Quinones, Alejandro Avilas Reyes, Keith Spangler, Greg Towner, Dan Gebhardt, Jody Zoranin, Lucas Barwick, Michael Baker, Brian Bechtal, Reinhardt Biggle, Greg Middlemas, Connie Moore, William Goffman, Brian Benton, Joan Churchill, Mike Bender, Rick Weinberg, Billy Crafton, Gary Matushek, Greg Latois Lopez, James Sloan, Jonathan Dillard, John Funk, Tom Bilch, Ronald Paroli, Dave Roll, Brian Hafner, Misha LeBlanc, Ari Messinger, David Grotke, Wally Estrella, Sue Reinert, John Lecco, Stephen Granada, Philip Mueller, Robert Lackey, Dominic Carroll, Jackie McCulloch, John Hickman, Jack Smith, Carl Presso, David Neves, Patty Louise, Terry Fitzgerald, Peter Steinmetz, Timothy Fitzpatrick, Dave Fletcher, James Stratakis, David Neves, Mike Lazuski, Hank O'Donnell, David Zanoni, David Weil, Matthew Sponseller, Chad Reno, Daniel Greger, Spartan Dale, Carolyn Ferguson, and thanks also to all past and anonymous members for helping make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available.